Foam Stars has the energy of a Sega Dreamcast game that was made specifically to look good on a quarterly earnings report. This third-person PvP shooter puts some creative twists on the winning formula coined by Splatoon, but that strong foundation is weakened by just about every multiplayer monetization trend from the last 10 years. For every clever map design, there's a cosmetic pap that costs more than the price of Foam Stars itself. There's still a fun competitive shooter here if you manage to surf deep enough into its sea of foam, but you'll have to wade past a whole bunch of red flags to find it. You play as a foam star, someone who can excrete a foam-like bodily fluid to do battle in a team-based competition in the city of Bath, Vegas. This extremely gross ability lets you cover the ground with bubbly bullets that morph each arena's topography in cool ways. Think Splatoon's Inc., just with the ability to pile up. Also like Splatoon, your character can move more quickly in the foam by surfing on it, but Foam Stars takes things a step further by weaponizing surfing. Once you deal enough damage to chill, not kill, your opponent, they become covered in foam, rendering them nearly immobile before you surf into them to finish the job. Alternatively, if your teammates foamed up, you can surf into them before they're put on ice for good. This small mechanic makes a world of difference by both encouraging and rewarding aggressive play. Suddenly, a foamed up opponent or teammate becomes a choke point to strategize around. That's especially true in Foam Star's central mode, Smash the Star, which puts a target on one player's head from each team. This mode's always available, whereas the other two standard options, Happy Bath Survival and Rubber Duck Party, rotate on the hour. Happy Bath Survival is my favorite, and easily the most unique mode Foam Stars has to offer. Half your team plays a truncated version of Smash the Star, while the others lather the map in foam from a perch above the battlefield. Scaling down the deathmatch to a two-on-two -two confrontation with a longer respawn timer nicely distills the fast-paced fun of Smash the Star into something more focused. And having teammates constantly spray the battlefield with foam adds a really fun layer to this mode too, as you can use it to disrupt your opponents, play defense, build a tower for your teammates, or just keep the other team from claiming too much turf. Meanwhile, Rubber Duck Party is Splatoon's extremely engaging and highly competitive tower control mode down to a T. You and your team need to hold the small area on top of a duck and ride it into your opponent's base. Standing on the small, elevated area of the duck's head exposes you to nearly the entire map and an all-but-certain volley of foam. And you can make yourself even more vulnerable by doing a short dance to boost its speed. While Foam Stars doesn't win any points for originality by copying this mode so closely, it's still a tried-and-true classic that's just as fun here. Unlike Foam Star's inky predecessor, all three game types are available in its various ranked modes. Also locked behind needless timing constraints, solo and team-based ranked play aren't both available at the same time, which makes ranking up a confusing dance that hasn't begun to make sense to me even after hours in the ranked queue. For example, your ranking in each placement match doesn't seem to have anything to do with your individual performance. That means doing well won't matter at all if someone AFKs and your team loses without a chance, while well, a win gives you the same rating regardless. It's all frustrating as a result, making me less inclined to try and grind my way up its ladder. Each mode has its own set of unique maps, which is as much in Foam Star's favor as it is a drag. While it guarantees that every match takes place in an environment designed specifically around that mode's mechanics, for example, the rubber ducky in Fusion Coaster Kingdom is on a tall roller coaster track, forcing you to get creative with your platforming. But there are only three or four maps available for each mode, meaning most can get stale pretty quickly. Wide lanes and open spaces overestimate just how quickly foam can stack up in Foam Star's bigger maps, too, making the middle of many maps like Aqua Blast Adventures a no man's land rather than a foamy battlefield. Okay. So, the party's about to start. Ready for some fun? Foam Star's roster of eight unique characters is disappointingly slim, though each of them at least has distinct strengths and weaknesses that add diversity to the lineup and cater to different playstyles. For example, Soa, Foam Star's pop idol mascot, has a jump that doubles as a dodge, allowing her to safely make aggressive plays. But my favorite is Agito, a shark-obsessed pro gamer with a shotgun-like bubble blaster and a movement-friendly special ability that rewards you for chasing chills. Or if you're not interested in grinding out PvP matches, you can also take on missions to save Bath Vegas from an onslaught of foamy baddies with up to three other players in a shooting gallery-like horde mode. Interestingly, the multiplayer version of these missions adds roguelike progression between rounds, which allows you to build your character's strengths and weaknesses in some highly satisfying ways. Despite the bland setup of its square arena, it's surprisingly fun to fight your way through these waves. But the same can't be said about the single-player story mode version which is so easy, I thought I might have accidentally missed a difficulty setting. No matter the mode, playing earns you experience points, which fill up Foamstar's modestly priced $6 battle pass. 
This doesn't try to reinvent the wheel, rewarding your time with premium content restricted to cosmetics only, except that is for each season's new character, which you'll need to slowly unlock as you play if you don't have the battle pass to get them right away. Otherwise, the pass features a handful of exclusive cosmetics and XP boosters, but no premium currency that you could put towards other items or the next season's battle pass like many games. That means we'll probably end up having to pay piecemeal for each new season as they come, that would feel pretty brazen even for completely free-to-play games, let alone one with a price tag like Foamstar's. The bulk of Foamstar's cosmetics come from outside the battle pass, nearly all of which cost real money too. Where some are an annoying but reasonable enough $4, far too many of the items in the shop are absurdly priced, with several item sets clocking in at a gut-checking $45. Adding insult to costly injury, very few of them are cool or interesting new skin, like giving Jet Justice a spacesuit rather than just simple palette swaps. Surfing around Foamstar's energetic fights can still be a blast, and its foam mechanics add a fascinating level of variability to each map. It's just hard to reconcile the good parts of that frantic, bubble-flinging fun with nearly everything happening outside of it. With its use of generative AI to make in-game album covers, the generic quality of which doesn't live up to the awesome songs they hold, laughable microtransactions, and small launch roster, it's tough to convince myself to just sit back and enjoy the fights. Square Enix has promised regular updates, but having each season last a whopping five weeks without any new maps or modes planned until mid-May is sure to exacerbate the current lack of content. Filmstars has placed all its bets on a horse with bad odds as well, following in the footsteps of Nintendo's famously confusing, unreliable online multiplayer. Almost all of the game modes are only available at certain times, obnoxiously rotating on a fixed schedule or tied to specific days of the week. Again, if it had launched with more content, this wouldn't be an issue, but right now you can only play a handful of matches in a given mode before it pointlessly disappears into the vault for an hour. Instead of adding specific queuing options, Foamstars has chosen to surf in the choppy wake of an almost 10-year-old game without hitting the same highs. Foamstars is at odds with itself. Its unexpectedly engaging combat mechanics and fast-paced matches draw me in, but trudging through its slim launch content and concerningly aggressive monetization has numbered its days on my PS5 hard drive. I feel like I've already seen everything it has to offer, and its announced update plan looks glacially slow for a sink or swim multiplayer landscape that's currently full of great options. Foamstar's ranked modes and maps may be exciting and nuanced mid-match, but the confounding, time-gated cues around them don't offer much motivation to grind up the ladder, which leaves me with very little reason to surf these bubbly waves no matter how much fun it may be. Thinking about giving Foamstar's a shot? Check out our tips and tricks for newcomers, or, for a different kind of action, our review of Atomic Hearts Trapped in Limbo DLC. And for everything else, stick with IGN. Who's